again. I'm going to give you a little video. Okay. So, <laughs> so you're pushing so, which button? So, so on this particular one, and there's several different tech bar controllers, but on this one was real popular for a long time. They replaced it with some other ones now. But right now, if you want, you push test, it'll run through and check the sensors, run the pump like we just heard it come on, and if there's a fault, then there a little arrow will show up down here. You look in the book, and if the arrow's pointing to whichever thing it is, you can go to the fault uh, troubleshooting, and it'll tell you what is wrong. Okay. The most common thing for these to go wrong is that sensor in your driveway. Yeah. When I walked by and I said, oh, you've got the new one. The new ones are blue in color. The old ones were kind of yellow in color. Okay. And what was the most common problem is the epoxy they were built out of. Okay. On the 4th of July, they'd get so damn hot, the epoxy would expand and break the circuitry in there. Okay. And they corrected it with this one. And these have been out for 12 or 15 years. Okay. And I've never replaced one. They're good. Okay. So um, by just pushing that, we just tested the sensor outside. Yep. You've got an outdoor air temperature sensor. You just checked that. Okay. So when this thing is operating, if it's below factory settings, and we can check them, if it's below 38 degrees outside mm -hmm. and warmer than 10, 38 is warm weather shutdown. So if it's okay. above 38, it's on warm weather shutdown. Yeah. If it falls below 10 degrees outside at night, it's on cold weather shutdown. Up in Park City, we kind of have to lower that temperature. Mm -hmm. And I've got doctors and people that have to, have to, have to, have to, have to have their driveways melted all the time. Yeah. And you've got to lower that down, whatever it is, whatever it is, you've got to pay the bill. But it costs you double to melt snow at zero degrees as it does at 20 degrees. And okay. that's what that's there for. Okay. Uh, we've got system up at the Hogel Zoo for the elephants and five of them, but uh, we have to maintain the slab at 90 degrees or they won't go out of their pens in the wintertime to get their pens cleaned. So I don't know what that costs them, but I could crank this up to any, any amount we want. It also has a setting on there that is called idle. Mm -hmm. Very expensive to run it out. I'm sure yours is and I'll check it, but I could idle that driveway at 31 degrees, 32 degrees, 33 degrees, and any blowing or drifting, if this was the helicopter thing at the hospital, and it absolutely could not have any ice or snow on it, you would idle it at whatever temperature. Okay. The Hogles would be idling at 90 degrees. Okay. So, uh, but very expensive run, because you can have two or three weeks without storms, and every night you're heating that thing up. So, residential, not so much. So, to check that, we've got a menu over here. And if, as I push that, I don't know if you can see on this side, it says adjust, and it goes down. The two we were most concerned with is the top one, which yeah. we're going to view what's in there. So let's go to an item. Outdoor right now, it's 61 degrees. That's your outdoor sensor. Yeah. Probably that wire right yeah. there. And is that the same? Is that what it's telling me here? Oh, it's yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And not in love with these, but let's just leave it. Okay. Um, slab target. What's your target temperature? What are you aiming for? And because we're in warm weather shutdown, mm -hmm. we're not aiming for anything. So okay. it's blank right now. Okay. Um, your slab right now happens to be 56 degrees out there. Okay. Okay. And we're back to warm weather shutdown. Okay. Uh, now, if we want to adjust something, we push menu again. Now we're in adjust. Uh -huh. So your runtime is two hours. If it's below 38 degrees, above 10, there's moisture in this sensor. It'll run for a minimum of two hours. And if the okay. sensor's still wet, it's gonna to continue to run. Okay. People think it's magic. Oh, I, my driveway turned on and it hasn't melted yet. And it's like making cookies. I tell people, yeah. you gotta preheat the oven. And in yeah. some cases you have a damn big oven to preheat. Yeah. But you might spend the first couple of three hours bringing the driveway from sometimes below zero up to 33 degrees to even get started, okay. but we're only aiming to bring the driveway to, we'll check it, 38, 40, 41. Okay. You don't want a 50, 60, 70 degree driveway at the end of the melt cycle, it's just wasted BTUs. Yeah. So you bring it up just hot enough to melt the snow, yeah. and at a low temperature, all that evaporates, and you don't get as much ice buildup down below. So 
uh, the evaporation thing is good and you don't want deer just sleeping on your driveway for no damn reason. <laughs> You'll get that. Yeah. You'll get that. So our minimum run time right now is two hours. Like I say, factory setting is four hours. If it's been doing a good job, I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, additional melt time. So once the sensor is dry, now it only knows what's going on right here. It has yeah. no idea what's going on. If you right. have snow drifts or whatever, yeah. okay. we can go dry and we can go dry plus, I think all the way up to nine hours. Somebody has added one hour of extra run time to it. So maybe keep an eye on things. It's probably done for a reason. But when you come out here during the winter and you see that that is dry, yeah. look at the rest of the driveway. If it's all dry, it dries at the same time. The object of the game is for everything to dry at the same time and yeah. cool down at the same time. But if you've got drifts or shaded areas or something, you have to run that extra hour. Maybe we add time, maybe we subtract time. I don't know, okay. but somebody's put that in there for a reason. So we'll, we'll leave it. If it was a crazy number, I'd probably talk you out of it. It's an efficiency yeah. thing, right? You just want to make sure that you're not uh, running any more. Any more than you have, you have to, to. But you, what you don't want to do is start and stop. Because once it cools down, yeah, you start from brutal. zero again. Oh, okay. So so yeah. if it starts, you want to Stop yeah, do the distance. And yeah. the snow plow will come along and throw all that snow on the upper up there. And to get that to loosen up to where you can get rid of it, you have no choice but to heat the whole driveway. Uh, you can't just heat just that area. Okay. We don't even like, don't even bother it. Do that. We so well, so it. if you wanted to, while it's in the run cycle, yeah. that's when you get up there and okay. have your best chance of getting rid of it. Okay. Okay. It automatically went back out to outdoor central. Let's see. Let's view. 61 degrees, no target, slat is 57, we're in the warm weather shut down. Let me um, ask you a question too, Ross, on, that, that's all on, 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 uh, on projects like this or, or um, systems, uh -huh. do you uh, oftentimes come and do like some of the maintenance stuff and just come and help with this sort of thing? Um, so or or the, is it so intuitive that the owners, they get on it so, and they have no so problem? I, I do have it serviced by Select Comfort, who okay. was the one who installed this. Okay. So, so um, there's not a lot for them to do. Um, okay. The biggest thing you're going to have is glycol, how much pressure is in here. That's the blue gauge. And then okay. add it, right, if you need it. Right, and, and, and there should be some in here. Now, I'll mention that any of these gauges, if we bought four different gauges and put them on here, they'd all read a little bit different. Okay. To get a good, accurate gauge, you spend quite a bit of money. But that'll give you an idea of what you got. Okay, so it's I, for some reason. Right. Is that normal it's saying, when it goes low? Yeah. It will do that, but it's not good for the system. Yeah, eventually it'll run you, out. You need to. And then when they service it, they'll add and fill this up. Okay. They do make a tank now. It's been out for a okay. while. Okay. They've improved it. It's pretty good. That you can just dump it in and a little motor, when it gets low, automatically pumps it oh, in. Oh, kitty, yeah. That's nice. They're a thousand bucks. Can you add that to this yeah, system? Yeah, it can be added to okay. any system. So, so that's an option. So, so an option. If, if you're seeing that that's happening. Right, right. If, uh, especially if you've got a slow light leak and you don't know where it's at or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, you can get through the winter uh, topping it off. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being mm -hmm. said, I would bet that that's closer to zero than we think. Uh -huh. The weight of the driveway, there's probably, yeah, it's got some in it. And it's pink, it's a right color. So, um, what should that be? That's why I call it. It should be pink. No, oh, no. Oh, should be at like uh, we, we want to be 100 or 75. No, so, so, let's look right here. Is this red a target over here? No, this is, no. so this one's pressure and this is temperature. Okay. So, temperature. You're going to be running anything above 135, maybe okay. 160, 170. So that's okay. when it's working. Yeah, and, and yeah, when it's on, and these get rusted up. But you can put that pointer. I oh, want to okay. say, I want to say that is at about 12 o'clock. So 160, 170 is right in here. Okay. So you have a 50 pound pressure and temperature relief valve. Okay. Any more than 50 pounds, that's going to blow off and squirt onto the floor. So, the right amount of fluid for this system would be about 30 PSI. 
Okay. And then 30 PSI cold. So yeah, the pressure's down too, or or, or the gauge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we we probably both. I I don't trust the gauge to be in. Perfectly accurate, but we know you're low on fluid. How do you increase the, the, the pressure? Is it by... You have to bring in a big old pump and hook hoses up and fill it up. And and, and then just increase that. Yeah, and, and you just fill it up. And inside of this tank, it's empty. That tank has got a rubber balloon in it, a bladder. And as you put water in there, it crushes that balloon. Oh, it increases the and, and, and that's what holds your pressure. And as it needs it, it pushes fluid in there, and then the, let's call it 30 psi. The boiler heats up, and all that water starts to expand. Now it's a shock absorber, and it expands and contracts, and also pushes fluid. In. So it's doing a few different things. Right now it's empty, but uh, that would be your glycol. So does that mean that that glycol has escaped? Does that mean that there is a leak somewhere? No, in the system? no, it's it's probably. Pill itself out of here. Okay. Um, when was the last time you added glycol? Probably going well, to know. They started the, I mean, this was put in last summer. Oh, okay. Did so, they say that they added the glycol? Yeah, they would have. They, 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 they would have had it. Right? They, they get it all. It was empty before they crimped all this stuff. All this stuff they crimped is kind of a new style. So then they drain it and then they put it back in and top it off. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. They should have purged the air out of it. So then at that time, so, so then within a year's time, less than a year's time, then you've gone to, you know. Right. So I it. wonder if they got all the air out of it to begin with for you last year. Okay. Um, let's see what you've got for purge valves in here. Let's do one here, one here. So let's just look. You could, you could force fluid in and isolate it. It would have to go out. It would have to. They even draw arrows for you. Have to come back and have to come out. So yeah, these two are the ones you'd purge from. You'd mm -hmm. isolate the system here and purge mm -hmm. it from there. Um, I'm not bragging. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's a. There's a, a lot of guys that don't have the equipment to purge. There's no such thing as going out and purchasing something to fill these with. There's not a school or anything. Mm -hmm. But what I've done is built a pressurized well pump that you would normally pump water out of the ground in the well, and it'll pump to 50 PSI okay. and a lot of fluid. And I can hook that to here and force air out of those at like rocket speed. Because okay. some of my stuff, I'm doing some man bridges downtown that are very elevated and okay. you've got to push that air from one side of the train tracks in this case back to the other side and, and okay. force it out with you know 50 60 psi so okay. so i don't know what they did or how much of that warning you want them to do or if there's anything you want me to do to it i don't care but number one would be built with what i call number two would be i take a serious look at those pumps mm -hmm. Um, and how do you do that? You just take, take them out, or how do you? How yeah, do you? there's. So when you take them out, you have to drain the system, right? So no, is it so? Or you can isolate these, it. They've got these little isolation valves right oh, here. Oh, nice. Screwdriver. Okay. Um, this is the old style. Uh -huh. Maybe you get sometimes it. Maybe you, you don't. Sometimes okay. you break your screwdriver. Sometimes you turn it off. And then, and then it's a forced issue yeah. with draining so the system. The, the, the new ones look just like this, um, and even oh, these. Much even these, they go sideways. Uh, yeah, you you don't just grab them and go like this because they get uh, glycol is sugar water, okay. it's hard water, okay. and that hard water builds up, and so you don't just want to break the handle. You want to kind of massage it, and it, then it'll loosen up and get going. Uh -huh. And yours are in pretty good shape. They, of course, they were used last year, but so so here's the new style. This is what the new ones would look like. Okay. So, so you can isolate and, and change that pump and not lose any glycol and put the new pump in. Okay. And, uh, um, so what would, um, what would the cost of new pumps be? Um, so a couple ways you could do it. Or, or also, do you, do you recommend doing this sequentially? Do the glycol 
but we won't really know if it's not. Right. Yeah. I, I, I would capture both pumps and that because what's going to happen is you're going to go yeah. winter without that. Or can you come back? Yeah, we could come back in the winter. It's just not happening. Yeah. And, and it, so maybe maybe that would well, be better. And, and, that, and so when you're asking me these questions, I'm on overload. I'm so damn busy. I've got so much okay. work that. Uh, I don't want to oversell you on anything because okay. I just don't know if I'll have time to even get back and do it. Okay. But um, no hard feelings. I don't care if it was these people or whoever change the pumps. Uh, yeah. The bigger the pump you buy, yeah. uh, again, sugar water, hard water, minerals build up in there. Mm -hmm. And that's usually what happens is those stainless steel impellers quit turning and then these will get super, super hot and or they just plain wear out. But anyway, what I'm getting at is the bigger the motor, the easier it is that it can break up that higher water mineral. And generally, the little pumps last five or seven years, these last 10 or 12 years, and the bigger the pump, they'll last even longer than that. Okay. And it all comes down to being able to clean itself with horsepower. Okay. So, so if they were to try to sell you one big pump, mm -hmm. as opposed to three little ones, I don't, wouldn't even care if it got tied together or, or leave Maybe, hell, maybe put this newer pump on this one yeah. and replace this with one big one. It might be a way to yeah. go. Um, I couldn't do anything like that for you probably till January before I could get back over here. I okay. think I've got 30 bleeders installed before the snow flies, so I'm, yeah. I'm just buried. Um, um, glycol wise, I would say get if you could get them well i do have them set. are they scheduled to come yeah okay. i have them set to and then you can check everything. and see if they tell you the same stuff i tell you <laughs> well no i'm not really <laughs> close that. um da, da, da. well it'd be good to be armed with a few answers to the maybe right. your own questions yeah. right October 12th they're supposed to come and do everything oh perfect so, so well, that's just around the corner but like the guy who services it's going to be different than the guy who wins all stuff so maybe I should talk to the installer so maybe. let them know that uh, your pressure is reading near zero and you know you need yeah. glycol it's all within the same company even though it might be the different person they should be able to translate that to the power sure, sure. and say especially if you hey. say and, then, and when you get to service these they could blow smoke up your butt and tell you that they're doing this or that. There's nothing to oil. There's nothing to change. There's a filter back here that uh -huh. I can tell by touching it. It's still brand new. Uh, it's just like a oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. air filter. That, so that draws the air in. Uh, that's not going to need to be replaced for years and years and years. Uh -huh. But I still need glycol. Okay. Yeah. The glycol, that's what I, I would, when they're coming out, um, give them the heads up to say, hey, yeah. be sure to be prepared bring to glycol. bring I know glycol. My, I know my glycol. And let's talk pumps, too. And yeah. whoever that would be, send send that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then if they can't help and it's January or right. February or, or something. Or, or you're Ross, not happy with our service can, or anything, I could, I could get back up here later in the year. The reason why I didn't say go ahead and just, just deal with these people here is because he's the best. Okay. He is just is. And so yeah. that's why and he's here. Do, does your company then... So the it's, me and my, it's me and my two sons. Uh -huh. We service over 300 boilers, uh -huh. mostly ones we've installed ourselves. Sometimes okay. we adopt somebody's system and, uh -huh. and, and, and help them out. But... Most of the stuff I service is my own. Uh -huh. I install copper fin boilers okay. all the time. It's a good okay. boiler. Okay. Um, and that's why walking in the door, just looking at it, I knew it was big enough for your driveway. Yeah. Um, so, so in that respect, they've done those right things, and maybe they'll know enough. And, and if last time you said, no, let's save some money and not change them, Maybe it's time to think about changing. I know that they pitched changing those. I think they pitched changing like this and the sensor. But I so so they probably sensor. did not. The reason I say that yeah. is remember when I said they have a three speed on them? Yes. So it's low, off, medium, off, high. Yeah. This is an old one. Yeah. This is a new one. Old, old, old. This yeah. is the newest out of the old ones. Okay. So, so this so has the three switcher? It does not. It does not. Okay. It does not. So this old style here yeah. is the oldest. Then they went to this. And then after that, they went to this. Okay. Okay. So you can kind of tell at a glance. Okay. So so all of these are probably at least 15 years old. 
Yeah. And, and is that it's, it's life? That's probably the life expectancy. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so yeah, I think if it were me, I would I would change them all now rather than pay for the extra labor to change them out one at a time as they fail. Well, yeah. especially when it will contribute to knowing the facts about if, if that's yeah. truly the issue right. out there. If it worked before yes. and you've got new pumps and the air is out of the system, it will work again. So that's why I asked, you know, did it ever work, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and same thing, usually the farthest thing away, in a lot of cases, is the top of the driveway, yeah. and that's where the air collects. So okay. they purge all the air out, get a strong enough pump to get up there and back, you should be fine. Okay. I know you've got plenty of everything else. Okay, okay. All right, well, I will talk to them about that, and if they can't come back with pump raises, yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally. And even if they quote you some prices and you want to check with me, I can say, hey, they're getting in your shorts or, you know, that's about, okay. the, about the right price. Okay. So I don't care. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, learn you, what you can. Are I, you familiar I, with this company? I'm not. Okay. I'm not. Um, but that doesn't yeah, mean anything. I've never, never heard of them either. They can, they can okay. be great. I don't know. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm licensed as a plumbing contractor. And a lot of my contractors are like, oh, good, give me a bit on the plumbing, too. And I'm like, well, I don't, do that. I don't all I do is radiant. Yeah. Uh, these guys that come in and say, hey, I know we do plumbing and heating and air conditioning and drain cleaning and this and that and the other. Yeah. It's, to me, it's bullshit. There's just too much to know about any one. Right. And for me to know everything about every plumb, moan fixture or shower valve right. or whatever, it's just too much. Right. And heating and air conditioning and... and Commercial, do they are they a big enough company that they got these people that specialize in this? And oh, they're limited. Say, they're limited immediately. Right, right yeah, out the gate. Yeah, yeah. So, so don't know if they tell you something different. And you're not sure about it. Call me and I'll give you yeah, what I've got. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. So um, that would be my recommendation. It looks like um, I would bet. Thornton Plumbing probably put this in originally. Yeah. He was he was big on these manual on offs. Yep. And maybe they're disconnected now. I say just leave it on auto. Um, yeah. Well, let's see. Okay, here's what he did. So you could you could manually let's see here. What did he do? So. These two run together, and this one runs alone. I would assume this one is zone one, yep. and this one is zone two. Okay. And you can say, hey, I want to turn on zone two for six hours. Oops. Then you could. It just runs on that timer. Manually, and then when the timer's done, it just turns off. But if your controls were working, your sensors are working, everything's doing its job, automatic is the way to go. If you're retired, you have time to look out the window all day, or some people will put on a camera and watch it. But what you don't want to do is get the storm almost done, turn off, everything cool down, and then four hours later turn back on to get rid of that last little skiff. You want the sensor to go to dry. and. I'm so cheap that on mine, I'll watch the weather report. And if there's four little skiffs of snow coming, yeah. yours is a little steeper than mine. I can turn mine off and wait for all three storms to go and then turn it on and get rid of this much snow rather than having it come on and preheat that oven three different times to make one little cookie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yeah, so, so. so. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, deal with that as you will and uh, okay. and after they come if you have any questions or or, okay. or or if you're not happy or whatever in January I can do you some more good let me know okay and and I'll yeah. do that okay um, yeah they have, they have some big I forget who they have but they told me like they have they might have like Percy Mountain or something but I think they're there's a small family company but they have some like Stuff up here, I and because I don't know them doesn't mean anything. They can be they can be just fine. Yeah, they, 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 they might have somebody that knows every. They got the right size boiler in. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. so and you wouldn't believe how many people go too small. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so so yeah. so that's good. Awesome. Okay. okay. All okay. right. And and what is your company name then? It's, it's switch. RHP it's Ross Hansen Plumbing. This is RHP and Sons. I guess me and my two boys, but I'm at 801 580 9021. Great. Okay. Got it. Okay, well, well I'll, I'll stick with these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Service 